This is a special edition of KTSM 9 News Small Town Spotlight. And we have once again taken our show on the road as we continue with our Small Town Spotlight series made possible by the fine folks over at Charlie Clark Nissan. Today we are coming to you live from Socorro, Texas, a truly historic gym here in the borderland. Good evening and thank you for joining us for this very special edition of KTSM 9 News at 5. I'm Andy Morgan. And I'm Monica Cortez. And you know what? This is our fifth installment, Andy. I'm so excited. I love El Paso. It mm -hmm. has so many small towns with so many incredible people. And today we are in Socorro where we have so many amazing people from agriculture to history to food to just everything. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really excited, Andy, and it's just going to be a lot of fun today. And, and what makes part of what Socorro is so unique, by the way, we got a, a live audience back here, everyone uh, <laughs> joining us here for KTSM 9 News at 5. What makes Socorro so unique, too, is the art. And we're mm -hmm. here at Casa Ortiz, uh, the gallery here, and it's also a startup uh, venue. And you see all the art displayed on all the different walls. Definitely what makes part of Socorro, Socorro, and very special. Oh, absolutely. So get this, Andy. This was actually built back in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. And so now it's used for tourism, for history. And we put together a package, well, Ozzy Carrillo did, <laughs> on this beautiful place. Check it out. Well, there's been different people here. Of course, the first person that they make note of is Jose Ortiz. The last person that was, or Epifanio Ortiz and his wife was Francisca Lujan, that was the actual known resident. During the 70s, well, when they found the building, it didn't, didn't have a portal. You'll see portales a lot now, but most of these buildings didn't have portales when they were originally part of the, of the system. They just didn't have them. I'd say around the mid-1800s they started putting portales on, on buildings. Originally, the I think it was until 2013 or 14, this was called the Bookery. It was a bookery for a long time. It was really known as the Bookery. It sat here fixed for a couple of years and finally was rented and then turned into an art gallery. Well, I think it's a big asset and it's very important to have these buildings uh, preserved and utilized and uh, it's real good for tourism to have different things right here in the little district. Very important to keep the history alive by keeping these buildings preserved. But you have to keep the history of these buildings alive. They're important on the Camino Real because it's a living road. It continues to live 1,600 miles from Mexico City all the way to Okeo Wenge in northern New Mexico. This is right on it. And here on the, on the Mission Trail corridor from a sled all the way to San Elisario, there's a lot of things going on. And I, I think uh, ultimately, maybe someday the, the school system will be able to do more. But I think uh, it's, it's people like you that come out here and do stories and, and uh, more people see it that uh, learn, learn that way. Man, every time we do these small town spotlight series, I feel so educated in learning the history. Too. Casa Ortiz, excited to be here, no doubt mm -hmm. about that. Something else that we mentioned uh, at 4.30 when uh -huh. we were uh, kind of previewing today's show, is there's another element to Casa Ortiz that maybe some people might not know about. I'm not exactly one for haunted, <laughs> spooky stories, but after seeing this video that we're going to mm -hmm, show in our mm -hmm. 6 o'clock newscast, I don't know what else to, to say, what it is. I got chills, Andy. So, yeah, me too. I, okay, I feel like I'm not one to believe in a lot of maybe ghosts mm -hmm. or anything. This one is something you have to see to believe. I am incredibly excited that we even got to see this footage. Right. So Video it, evidence is there. It's yes. just... What exactly is that? Exactly. And so you'll get to see that in our 6 o'clock hour. So guys, do not go anywhere. Stick around for that. Yeah, no doubt about that. Another thing that you just saw uh, in that story that was put together by Ozzy Carrillo is 
uh, Congressman Tony Gonzalez. Oh, His yeah. office is actually here right at here. Casa Ortiz. <laughs> Not many uh, congressmen or, or really even anybody in particular can say that their office is even older than the United States of America, I our know. own government. And that it? is the case right here in uh, Casa Ortiz for uh, the congressman. Yeah, actually, his office is right there. You can't see it, know, but right it's around right, the there. right there. <laughs> over here. In fact, he sent out a statement, and you'll see that in your screen right now, and I'll go ahead and read it to you, but it basically says, we look forward to welcoming constituents and curious travelers to Casa Ortiz. That's right, Congressman. Gonzalez is committed to highlighting the amazing cultural and historical gems embedded across our small towns from Favens to Socorro, end quote. And we are very lucky to be inside here at Casa Ortiz. I know last week we were outside of uh, San Elizario, mm -hmm. the chapel. So much history Beautiful here in there. the borderland. Yeah. And, uh, we're just trying to s shine a spotlight on, hence the small town spotlight series. <laughs> yes, and I love where you're going with this. So we're indoors where it's a little mm -hmm. more air conditioned. Yeah, a little more um, airflow. Yes, because our very own meteorologist, Robert Bettis, he's out there. And Robert, okay, so question, are we going to hit triple digits today? We're going to get really close today. It's in the upper 90s right now. And if we don't touch it today, how does 101 sound tomorrow? So I'm glad you're enjoying that air conditioning inside Casa Ortiz. Actually, right outside behind Casa Ortiz, the fun will really get started this weekend. They're having a giant event on Saturday, and they're already trying to bring in the big monster trucks. They're going to have some sweet rides on display. Of course, they'll have all kinds of music out here at this event center. They might have to cut that tree down in the distance to get the monster truck in. I'm just kidding. Either way, you do need to prepare for this. For Father's Day weekend, we're looking at about 102 on Saturday, 104 for dads. In the long range forecast, we could be looking at a day with a high of 108. I'm going to have your detailed forecast. We'll talk about those hot days coming up in just a bit. Monica, Andy. Robert, thank you very much for that. Stay cool out there. And one thing when you think of uh, Socorro, you mm -hmm. absolutely think of the mission. Socorro Mission. 100% in the Socorro Mission, original Franciscan mission, uh, founded in 1682. And this wow. was during the Pueblo Revolt. So when we said that there's a lot of history here in Socorro, we certainly mean it. I know, and I love history so much, Andy. I like to think of what could potentially have been happening. So get this, uh, the mission was actually built in 1839 because there was another one before it in 1829, but it was destroyed by a flood. Mm -hmm. I just think that is incredible story. Actually, we have a little bit more to share with you with this particular story. Check it out. Socorro is the heart and center of this community. This pueblo was established 343 years ago. This is the third mission that was built for the third Socorro Pueblo. Our first and second pueblos were washed away by the river. We have beautiful, direct and very tangible connections to the first pueblo in the beams. Any wood, any timber, lumber, vigas that were still in good use were put in the second pueblo. When the second pueblo was destroyed, then they were brought here. And there's beautiful designs on them that um, the piro, the piro is to Socorro what the tigua is to Isleta. At the windows, you can appreciate the width of the building, a little over five feet. It had to be a very strong and stout building to sustain the weight of the vigas and the roof. We walk into Franciscan simplicity, white wood accents. By the time we get to the altar, the Franciscans are no longer here, the Jesuits are here, and there's just much more elaborate, it's a much more elaborate altar, much more European, evoking columns and gold leaf, and the wood is then painted to look like marble. It's a wood structure. The facade is meant to evoke a bird in flight, like a spread eagle. 
Sometimes the people from the outside come with a much deeper appreciation and curiosity. Local appreciation is really not as healthy as it could be. But to, to have appreciation for the historical value, the communal value, the spiritual value of the Socorro Mission is to come into appreciation for really our deep history. We are an untold story. You don't find us everywhere. You don't find the story of this mission trail, this mission in common, you know, history. We really have to promote it and learn it and share it. There is lots and lots of history here and uh, maybe not as appreciated as it could be. love how she talked about promoting that history yeah. and just when you think about the Socorro mission and you see inside it just the preservation that they've been able to maintain this building for hundreds and hundreds of years absolutely incredible it is just to think that that wood is painted to look like marble it mm -hmm. really looked yeah. like marble it, it's just incredible you guys have to come out and check it out for yourselves but right now it's time to turn over to the news of the day that's right Carla Draxler is standing by in our studio in West El Paso Carla, take it away. Thank you so much, guys. I'll send it back to you in a bit. Let's take a look at our top stories for today. U.S. Customs and Border Protection officers seizing more than $300,000 worth of methamphetamine at the Isleta port of entry. According to CBP, officers intercepted 111 pounds of meth on Sunday when two individuals attempted to drive from Mexico in an SUV. They were referred to a secondary inspection where CBP officers located 99 bundles of meth sealed within the vehicle's fuel tank. The drugs and the SUV were seized by CBP and the individuals were turned over to Homeland Security investigations. A U.S. Army soldier deployed to the El Paso border is accused of sexually soliciting a 15-year-old girl in an undercover online sting. That's according to the El Paso Times. 22-year-old Axel Cabrera was arrested by the Texas Department of Public Safety last week on a charge of online solicitation of a minor when he went to meet the girl. She was actually an undercover agent, according to the report. Cabrera mentioned he was in El Paso for a short time due to Army training. And that was your look at our top local stories. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this quick break. KTSM 9, putting local first. Your local weather authority, Robert Bettis, the Borderlands only certified broadcast meteorologist.
Now, I am telling you, this is the most luxurious monster truck I've ever been in, including the rich Corinthian leather. We need to get a whole fleet of these for Channel 9. We'll get there on time every time. <laughs> of course, none of this could happen without Charlie Clark Automotive Group sponsoring our small town spotlight. The one, the only, Bobby Bone. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, keep clapping, but I'm going to get down. Let's Hold go. on. Let's go. All right. Let's go. Okay. All right. Here right, we go. Okay. Th you thank can do it. Yeah. Th <laughs> thanks, Bobby. <laughs> yes, sir. Appreciated Anytime. that a lot. Anytime. Sure is hot out here. Let's take a look at that forecast. Here comes your exclusive nine hour forecast for our Thursday. Temperatures are going to continue to climb over the next few days. As expected, Father's Day weekend will be a triple digit heat weekend. 101 our high temperature tomorrow. The winds are going to be stronger for our Thursday, gusting to about 35 miles per hour. Here are the high temperatures so far today. 99 in Juarez, 96 El Paso, 90 Alamogordo, 93 Deming, and 94 in Las Cruces. Those winds gusting to between 25 and 30 miles per hour. We're going to feel it the worst right on the eastern slopes of the mountains. But as we've seen the last few nights, give it a while and those winds will slowly die down. Well to the south of the borderland, we have partly cloudy skies, even a couple of light showers, but nothing around here. We can expect here to be clear tonight with those few clouds disappearing through the evening. Here comes your allergy forecast. The pollen count peaks on Friday at 5. 5.7 before dropping a bit for the weekend. Traveling, we've got severe weather hot spots through the deep south, Louisiana and Mississippi, Arkansas, also through Kansas and Oklahoma. But for us, a few clouds for our Thursday and the wind stronger, gusting to about 35 miles per hour. Here come the low temperatures tonight, 58 in Alamogordo, 55 Deming, 70 for Juarez and 67 Van Horn. Your high temperatures tomorrow, Alamogordo at 97. 96 for Deming, 98 Las Cruces, 101 for Juarez, and 100 Van Horn. Tonight, Las Cruces, a few clouds, but clearing. 59 the low temperature. Tomorrow, expect a high of 98 with those southwest winds, 35 miles per hour. 70 the low temperature at the International Airport tonight. Give it a while. The clouds will clear and the winds will slowly die down in the night. They're going to be back stronger again tomorrow with partly cloudy skies and a high of 101 degrees. Now, only KTSM gives you nine full days of weather, and unfortunately, it is a very hot forecast. Friday, 101 and breezy, gusty winds on Saturday, partly cloudy, and 102. Just for Dad, that high pressure continues to build at 104 in the afternoon. 106 on Monday, and then the dome of high pressure kicks into a high gear Tuesday through Friday. We could see a high temperature as high as 108 by Thursday. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Right. Let's go. Now, we'll Let's see go. if everybody's clapping and this happy when we hit 108 <laughs> next <laughs> Thursday and oh, no. yeah, it'll be just as hot down here in Socorro. Yeah. Of course, we've got the racing teams over here. Let's go. We've got the fine folks from Charlie Clark, the world famous Bobby Bone. <laughs> Bobby, we do this every Wednesday. It gets yes, more fun every time. Every time, it? every time. And the people and the communities that come out here are amazing. They make it what it is. That's what makes El Paso beautiful. I love it. I love it. Well said. Okay, back to you all. More KTSM 9 News coming up in just a moment.
our Papa Pairing's favorites for just $6.99 each. Order now on the app from Papa John. All right. Well, just across the street from us is Charlatan. And oh my gosh, look at their food. It is so delicious. So apparently it's an Asian Mexican fusion. And I can't wait to dig into this. So guys, thank you so much for this amazing, delicious meal. We had a story about this uh, earlier, I, think, I believe in the 430 mm -hmm. newscast. Mm -hmm. So if you missed that, you'll want to head over to KTSM.com. And uh, while we're on the topic of food, mm -hmm. beverage, a lot of tourism here in Socorro yeah. in our small town spotlight series that we're kind of uh, trying to highlight in one of those, uh, shall we call breweries, Three Missions Brewery here yeah. in uh, Socorro. Just next door. Hopefully you all have heard of uh, Three Missions Brewery and if you haven't, well, we got you covered. I love the history of the area. I love beer and I wanted my business to have both. We found this building on the Mission Trail and true ad adobe, vigas, latias. It's a, it's a brewery, sometimes I have food. Um, I do a lot of uh, pop-ups with charlatan, taqueria, and ramen. And, uh, but yeah, so we make all of our product in-house. We only have beer on tap. Our most popular beers are pomegranate beer. That's made with local honey from Savala Sunny Farm from Fabens, Texas. Pomegranate juice, apple juice, and churro malt. I would say second to that is our pecan beer. I try and do a lot of locally sourced ingredients. I like uh, things that are local, henceforth the pecans. It's a big uh, pecan culture here. I get a mixture of a lot of clientele. Now it looks like we have the right businesses for the area of tourism, right? Including uh, alcohol, beer, food, and art. As long as the legal hours, I'll be open, yes. <laughs> Absolutely love that they use some of the local ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely love that. I'm a beer guy. Okay. And I'll say this, I've actually tried two of their beers. I've tried that pecan beer. Okay, how is it? Absolutely delicious. Ooh. One of my favorites. I do find myself enjoying it more uh, in the fall and like winter okay. time because it's a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah, heavier. More, uh -huh. uh, the mango one too that they have. <gasps> I love mango. Absolutely okay. delicious. That one may be more of a summer, summer. flair if you feel it. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. And you know what? I kind of want to get a little bit back to the history, Andy. Mm -hmm. And I, I really can't wait to hear from this guy. So apparently, he's what we call a walking history book. There you go. Al Borrego. So let's go ahead and send it over to our very own Tony Davis for a look at more. Tony. Hey there, Andy and Monica. I'm here with Al Borrego, who is the president of the Cultural Heritage Society of the Camino Real. And Mr. Borrego, you know, a lot of people don't know that this place is out here. And how, like, tell us the story. Give us a brief history of this area. Well, we've had um, over 345 years to know about this place. It's been here forever. Socorro's been up here since uh, 1680, you know, during the Pueblo Revolt. And uh, this whole area started developing as a paraje on the Camino Real way before that. So this particular building here at Casa Ortiz is a, is a building that uh, is most probably one of those original buildings from the early uh, 1600s. But uh, the records start to show that it, it was built, they figure, in the middle 1800s. And uh, I mean, we've seen pictures and we have pictures of this building before the portal was even added. The portales, uh, the portales and buildings in this whole area don't come to be till the mid 1800s. So uh, that's when it gets added to this particular building. But uh, there's just way too much history. I mean, you've got um, the Camino Real running right here, right next to us. You've got the old site of the old Socorro Mission about a half a mile from us and the new mission on the other side of us. I mean, there's just massive, massive history here. That is awesome. And I wish we could stay and continue talking about the history, but say, say again about, you know, we say El Paso, there's not a lot to do here, but what can you say about that, like people wanting to come out here? Well, right here in, uh, in the middle of the Mission Trail Corridor, Nine Mile Corridor, Isleta San Elisario, you've got Socorro. And here in Socorro, you've got a lot. 
you've got the mission, you've got the old mission, you've got the historic district here with the all new um, cultural event center coming up here. You've got restaurants, you've got uh, Dusty Tap, you've got Three Missions Brewery here. There's a lot of things to do here and don't forget the Adobe uh, uh, Moonlight Theater Hall that they have here. They used to be La Cueva that showed uh, silent movies back in the early 1900s. Well, thank you so much, guys. I'm just going to send it right back to Andy and Monica. Oh, we're going to actually send it right over to break. For your free AAA full picture quote today, you'll be glad you did. We've run out of time, but we have much more to share with you live from Socorro at six o'clock. Bye. Hair, makeup, and.